go ahead and get started. Um, thank you everybody for coming out tonight and welcome. Um, my name is Shane Kelton. I'm the Director of Operations for the City of Snangelo and I'll kind of be leading us through the meeting this evening. Um, want to get started here. Want to uh, kind of introduce some some of our elected officials that are here. To, uh, that way you know that your representatives are here as well here to listen uh, to, to your voice and your opinions as well. Start off, we have Mayor Brenda Gunner is here with us tonight. We have, let's see, I think council member Lucy Gonzalez right here. We also have uh, Councilman Harry Thomas in the in the back back there. We have Council Councilwoman Billy DeWitt in the back, as well as Councilman Lane Carter as well too. I see Councilman Tom Thompson. Uh, so we have a, uh, we're very well represented with council members here. We have city manager Daniel Valenzuela as well, assistant city manager Michael Dane. We have representatives from Republic Services here as well, general manager Davey Daniels, and um, municipal services uh, manager uh, Joe Spano as well too here from Republic Services. So uh, again, well represented, did from from all of the agencies and as well as the city as well too. And so here tonight, uh, our main our main focus here tonight is to kind of give you all a little update about the recycling industry kind of as a, as a whole, uh, uh, nation, nationally and worldwide. And then also um, to hear y'all's input and, and get y'all's feedback on, on how y'all would like to see your curbside recycling program here in San Angelo move forward in the future as we are trying to deal with the issues that are uh, these global issues that we're that we're having to deal with, and starting to feel the pinch here in the city as well too. So, with that, we will get started, and uh, we want to start off first with a little video clip here uh, tonight. This is from NBC Sunday Spotlight. Um, it's one of the many national stories that have come out on national news, and we want to get started with it because it kind of gives us a, a a good overall summary, but a brief summary as to uh, kind of the global industry and, and what what we're facing um, nationwide. So with that, we'll get Brian to key up the video and we'll watch that. I'll have a short, short slideshow and then again, we'll start taking y'all's input. So again, thank y'all for being here tonight. We Americans have dutifully washed out and separated our recyclable containers and sorted them into bins before putting out the trash. You're probably doing a lot of that this holiday weekend. But do you ever wonder where it all goes and how much of it actually is recycled? In our Sunday Spotlight, NBC's Joe Ling Kent finds all that recycling piling up and looking for a new home. On Garbage Day, Americans put out their blue bins full of recyclables ready to be processed and reused. Americans recycle about 66 million tons of stuff a year, but now all that effort may be going to waste. The U.S. used to ship more than a thousand shipping containers full of recyclables to China every day. But now, because of new restrictions, exports are down 40%. That's because China has stopped accepting the majority of our recyclables. It all changed back on January 1st, after Beijing launched a new aggressive anti-pollution push, cracking down on what it calls foreign garbage. It was a shock to the system. The Chinese government now bans the imports of 24 types of scrap, including some paper and plastic. Now recyclables are piling up here at home with nowhere to go. The change has upended business for Pete Keller at Republic in Seattle, one of the largest waste managers in the country. You used to send a lot of this stuff to China. Where are you sending it now? Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, a little bit of materials going to India. But those countries can't take all the recycling that China used to accept. So Republic sends about 2,000 tons of their recyclable paper to the dump every month. When material like this, like all this paper, can't get recycled fast enough, it can end up going to a landfill instead. In Tacoma, Washington, Steve Frank of Pioneer Services is still in shock. How much in total did you send to China last year? Uh, 100 to 120,000 tons. And this year? Uh, zero. Now it's costing companies more to send paper and plastic to countries that will take it. China made the bikes, the computers, 
the iPhones, ship the containers here full of the product. The product got unloaded and we'd fill it with recyclables to send that container back. Now the container comes here, I fill it full of recycled paper and send it to India. And somehow that container has to get now from India back to China. Back at Republic, Keller is bracing for price hikes. How much more is the American consumer going to pay now that all of these changes are happening? The average household will probably see price increases somewhere in the 2 to $4 per month range. Experts caution even then paper and plastic in the U.S. will continue to pile up. China still does accept a small amount of American recycling, but it must be cleaner than ever. If I could say anything to the American public, right, it's these three simple words, empty, clean, dry. We get a lot of half-eaten pizzas, a half a bottle of ketchup. Those types of items can contaminate perfectly clean recyclables. A small step to help your recycling really get reused. For Sunday Today, Joe Link Kent, Seattle. And again, this was this was just one of the many stories that, and headline national headlines that had been out there and made the news as well too. This was just a, a very brief one that that kind of gives a, a brief outline of what's going on. Uh, and, and it continues as we, as we move along, um, more restrictions, and, and we find out uh, every day, you know, other things that are happening out there as well, too, within uh, within the industry. Um, and of course, this uh, this was uh, out of the Seattle Times, and, and and this one's even a bit outdated as well, too, as you can see the price of what um, uh, mixed paper was doing um, back before China made the announcement. Uh, and then back in March, uh, earlier in this year, we can see where, you know, mixed paper dropped down to only, you know, $5 a ton. And we were going from a 3% a, a um, acceptable contamination down to a 0.3% contamination level. So as we look at some of those factors going on, it just keeps getting stricter and stricter and stricter. And now, uh, today, um, China has uh, banned all mixed paper from, uh, from coming in from any country as well. So now they're not taking any mixed paper, no matter what the level of contamination is. And mixed paper, is, as we're looking at mixed papers, mixed paper is going to be your newspapers, all of those circulars and flyers and, uh, and all of the junk mail that comes in um, into your mailbox every day. Those are mixed papers. And, and mixed papers, you know, historically across the U.S. Is, has made up of about 20, you know, made up about 20 percent of the recycling stream. So, uh, you know, that's, that's quite a bit of paper. And, of course, paper equals a lot of weight as well, too. So, but those are just some of the things that are happening, happening on the world stage as well, too. And, and, of course, everything does finally trickle down to San Angelo. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it, it, it's fairly quick, unfortunately. But as we're, as we're moving forward, you know, when we're talking about global, we're going to bring it a little closer into home. When we start what's going on, you know, we can talk about what's going on around the nation, but a lot of times that doesn't necessarily, you know, you look at Seattle and how hard it's hit. And their market and their, their conditions are a little different than ours, but we start looking around Texas, and we look at the city of Fort Worth, and the city of Fort Worth, and, of course, with every, every city, they, they do things a little differently. And, of course, the city doesn't, city of Fort Worth doesn't do it exactly like we do, but... They actually have a contract directly with a materials recovery facility, or MRF, and you'll you'll hear me the MRF. Well, that's acronym of MRF, and you'll hear me say that. But it's a materials recovery facility. They have a, they have gone out and contracted directly with one of those, and they pay them to process their material. When the material is sold, um, the profits go back to the to the city of Fort Worth. You can see the recycling program in 2017 profited uh, the city of Fort Worth almost a million dollars. As of June of this year, uh, they're looking at a, uh, in the red by 465,000. Uh, and that's just of June in this fiscal year. And as they look into projections for fiscal year 19, looking at a, almost a $1.7 million reduction um, in, in what they're looking in revenues uh, coming back into that program and actually costing them in that program. City of Longview, uh, similar. Uh, they were actually being paid by their material recovery uh, facility that they contract with directly. Uh, the, the facility was actually paying the City of Long, Longview $10 uh, per ton for their recyclables prior to 2018. Now, the City of Longview is actually play, paying 
the, the facility $20 a ton. So they've had a $30 per ton shift in, in their pricing in Longview. Uh, Plano, uh, their program in the last six months, revenues decreased by 86%. City of El Paso, uh, the, the processor that they contracted with, um, they were recently paying them $75 a ton. The contractor came back and asked for a $40 per ton increase. So again, we can see that it's, it's affecting everybody and it's even affecting all of us here in the, in the state of Texas, not just the city of San Angelo as well. So, so what's going on here in San Angelo? <clears throat> as well, we're, we're starting, the city of San Angelo is starting to fill the pinch. Um, and as we, as we look at it, uh, Republic Services came to City Council on September 4th, um, three, about three weeks ago, and um, asked the City Council to, to look at some different options as we're moving forward, trying to figure out what, what do we want the City of San Angelo's curbside cycling program to look like. Um, they, there's a, with their contract with Butts is expired, uh, and as we're moving forward with all of the different issues, Butts was their, uh, their contracted recycler, the person that was doing the recycling, uh, their, their recycling facility that they were using. And through the contract negotiations, the prices um, that they were working out uh, between Butts and Recycling and their negotiations to continue the recycling, uh, of course, those prices came back greatly increased. Um, so there's, there's looking at increases in prices uh, um, across the deal or, or across the board. And so as we're looking at that, you know, we don't, we don't just want to come in here and say, hey, we need more money to keep doing work. We want to come in here with options and we want to come in here and see what the citizens want. What do y'all actually want y'all's recycling program to be? What do you want it to look like? I've even had a lot of people call me and contact me and say, I don't even want a recycling program. So, I mean, it, it goes from all across, the gamuts are all across the board. And so, but council directed staff to host some town hall meetings and to receive y'all's feedback. We also have uh, uh, published an online survey that we would like everybody to go go, whether it's on your phone or on your computer at home, uh, iPad, whatever it is, please go online to coast, cosatx.us forward slash recycling and please, and please take the survey. The questions on the survey, these are, these are pared down to, to bullet points. There's a little more information being asked for on the survey, but these are the basic questions. Did you recycle before our curbside, curbside recycling program went into place? Do you currently utilize the curbside recycling program? Uh, and then we ask why or why not? Uh, and of course, there, there it goes into a little more detail within the survey itself. Um, and then we ask, would you be willing to pay more to continue the curbside recycling program as it is right now? Um, would you continue, continue to recycle the, um, if the types of products that we placed in the curbside recycling were reduced, if, if we took out some of those materials that are no longer marketable and no longer can be, uh, or nobody is accepting as recyclables anymore, um, would, you, would you be willing, um, uh, if curbside recycling did not continue, would you um, be willing to use self-sorted drop-off, regional drop-off locations around town um, with, with a re, kind of a rework of our trash system? Uh, how we're collecting trash right now, uh, and also if it did not continue, would you would you want to or would you be willing to subscribe to a or a subscription service where the citizen would contract directly with a service provider, whether that's Republic or any other service provider, for a subscription service where you had a contract directly with that service provider to come pick it up at your house. Um, I don't know if anybody knows, but curb, uh, recycling within the city of San Angelo is non-exclusive. So uh, any, any recycling provider uh, can offer a service for recycling, uh, whether that's at your home or your business. So it's not, it's a, it's not an exclusive contract there. And so that, that's basically the questions that we have on the survey and we ask that you go fill those out. Uh, we have so far today, um, as of about four o'clock, received uh, 1,621, I believe, surveys back. So please, go out there and, and fill out those surveys because um, that's just a little over 1%, uh, almost 2% of our, of, of our customer base. And so again, really want to know more of what all of the citizens of San Angelo are looking for. Uh, 
Um, back in the September 4th um, council meeting, Republic Services uh, posed uh, these as possible, uh, possible options for us to look at. Again, this is not an inclusive list, but w w again, if there are other options out there, if there's other ide ideas out there, we want to hear them, but these are some of them. Uh, of course, the most direct one is uh, just pass the increased cost of, of doing business onto the city, i.e. onto the citizens. Uh, again, that's not one that our council is in favor of. I can already tell you that because I have been told that. Um, <clears throat> temporarily suspend the marketing of, uh, the marketing of materials which means basically what we would do is the, assist, the, the program would go on just like it is, so we continue to come pick up your recyclables. But the only difference is, is that until the market recovers and, and becomes a viable, there becomes a viable market for these products again, those products would be landfilled. Uh, another one, uh, another uh, proposal would be to change the accepted materials. Uh, again, we asked this on the survey question, to reduce it down to those materials It'd still be a curbside service, just like you're receiving now, but we would only accept those materials that are still marketable. Cardboards, aluminums, um, white papers, those type things uh, that, are still, that still have some market value uh, to them. Uh, another option that was proposed at Council would be to change the service levels of your trash and add regional drop-off locations for pre-sorted uh, materials, again, those that are still marketable. The, Again, the aluminums, the cardboards, those type of things. Uh, and then the last one that they proposed, again, was the subscription recycling service. To, uh, for Basically, we would do away with the curbside recycling program as it stands today, rework the trash component of our contract, um, because we realize if we take away a container and a source of, of, uh, of waste disposal that we are going to have to provide an additional container or there's going to have to be some adjustment for the increase in actual trash that that households need to get rid of and so we would we would go back and look at making those adjustments but again if you still want to recycle um, you would still have with this option you would still be able to subscribe um, to whether it's Republic or another provider if somebody wants to step up and, and actually provide those services uh, which would be a contracted fee between the citizens themselves and the provider. Uh, the city would basically be out of the recycling business at that point. So those were the those were kind of what was presented at the at the council meeting. And so, as we want to move moving forward, we want to start taking your comments. Uh, I want to remind everybody that we are being broadcast live on SATV and Facebook and I think YouTube as well. And so, with your questions, we we would ask that. If you have questions or comments and want to give us your feedback, please uh, come to the microphone and, and say that so everybody uh, that's out there uh, on, watching on TV or Facebook or YouTube can, can hear the question and uh, be able to, to hear an answer and or hear the comment as well too. And then uh, also, I'll throw it over to Anthony. Anthony's going to also tonight, our public information officer, uh, for those that are out there watching on TV and, and those other things, they can actually submit questions and I'll let Anthony tell everybody how to do that. So as Shane mentioned, we are broadcasting live, not only on SATV, but on the City of San Angelo Public Information Facebook page. So anyone who's following us live online is uh, welcome and encouraged to uh, post their comments and their questions and we will work those into tonight's discussion. We also are on Twitter at City of San Angelo, and so we'll be taking those questions as well through that uh, through that source and working those into the discussion tonight. Thank you. So with that, um, that kind of again, a very quick presentation, a quick overview, uh, because this is this meeting more about y'all and, and y'all's input to us, uh, so we can get that input to your council members. And of course, your council members are here tonight as well too. Most of your council members are here tonight to listen to, to you uh, in person as well too. So please, uh, questions, comments, please step forward to the microphone and, and uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, Edwin Guthrie. Uh, my question is, if we completely did away with the recycling program, how would that directly impact the landfill as far as the life expectancy? If we took all the recyclables, out to the landfill, how much time will, will it take to absorb it? That was my question. 
if you, if you base the answer just directly on tonnage, that equates to about six months. There's a little more to the math than that, depending on your recycling well, streams. Only the landfill, if my understanding is correct, if we started right now, canceled the program, sent everything to the dump, it only the landfill would only lose it would, it would, a six month life expectancy. Is that uh, correct? Under our under our current permit right now, correct, as, as it stands, it, it would save us about six months, based on direct tonnage, right. not necessarily compaction rates and all of that thing, but based on direct tonnage, that's an approximate approximate number. Oh, well, that's what I'd move for then, because I mean, if we're losing money on the front end and we're not getting nothing on the back end, and it's only a six month sacrifice, that'd be my recommendation. Got a qu the Stan Metter speaking. Um, I've got a question about, I guess, two questions. Um, you mentioned 20% is paper. Um, as far as other marketable um, items, I'm, I'm kind of curious about what's out there. And one of the options that you talked about was changing the acceptable materials. And so I was wondering if you could kind of go into that just a little bit more. And the second question was um, on that subscription option, the last one that you presented on the slides. Um, if if you were if someone were to subscribe to that, would it be safe to assume that 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 that's just going to go to end up in the landfill too at this point? The the first the first question, the acceptable materials uh, again, it, it's it's it would go to a. a Basically, and, and we would have to sit down and negotiate this with Republic, looking at it uh, from a market, marketability standpoint. But we would we would look at you know we we know aluminums are still still have value in the marketplace. We know cardboard still has value in the marketplace. We know white papers still have some value in the marketplace. Um, there you know and, and certain and, and there may be certain plastics that still we're not losing ourselves or you know the that the, 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 we're really losing on and so there may be some of those things that we would have to work out the details on but those those are some of those uh, those that we're looking at there as well and, too. and are those markets more domestic based in other words we wouldn't be quite so dependent on it having to find its way to China for that to happen or is this still international driven internationally driven those markets and boy I if I'm I'm I am not a recycling expert, okay. so but uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily, and I'm not sure where the market, all the markets are are being driven from, and so I, I would okay. hate to answer your question because okay. I might might not be telling you the truth on that one. So, uh, hey Shane, as uh, as uh, we have some folks making their way to the mic, we have a question from online: Will we have to pay an extra charge for another trash can if they propose to do away with recycling? Again, those are those are things that we still have to negotiate through the process. But uh, I'm a, I'm going to step out on a limb right here and say no. Uh, that uh, if we take away recycling as a whole and we just do completely away with it, then we would we would offer the second can for free. Okay, my name is Bob Pascal. Um, I have a question, and, and maybe I'm just Ill, not well informed. How th this is all this problem has come about because of a decision by Butts not to recycle. But no, no, not not necessarily. But Butts is contract with Republic, ex existing contract expired, and when as they were negotiating a new contract for them to continue, the prices have that they were asking to continue a new contract or to continue to recycle for. Republic or be the material recovery facility for Republic, their prices increased drastically uh, for to go into a new contract. They haven't refused. They didn't say they wouldn't do it. It's just the price, the price of doing business has gone way up. Yeah, the, yeah, and China has created the problem by not. Okay. You, we can no longer. Mar they can no longer. Whoever the material recovery facility is, if they are. They're, they're receiving the material, they're sorting it, and then they're selling it to offset their costs. And if they cannot sell the material, they cannot offset their costs to do business. Okay, and I know we're subsidizing as a, as a citizen recycler. 
the operation of butts through our monthly trash bill and all that kind of yes, stuff. Sir. And so a price increase is one thing that might offset some of that. But I go back a little bit further and say, this is a, a problem between butts and Republic. And they're asking the city of San Angelo to resolve their problems. And I guess my question is, why are we stepping in at this point before they have come to a full resolution on whatever contract they're going to have? Are we not getting in front of their legal liabilities to each other? I, it's almost like we're saying, well, Republic, it didn't work out for you. Uh, Safe is closed now. Go Green Recycling's closed now. I think another couple of recyclers have closed. There are no options. We can. We've got the city of San Angelo. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> over a barrel, we can just ask for more money. And I, I don't think that's right. I think there's. I think Republic and Butts both have a responsibility to solve this problem without saying it's going to cost you as an individual more money. Now, 50 cents a month, big deal. I'm sure there are a lot of people who have worked very hard for recycling in this community for the last 25 years who would be willing to pay, I don't know, two bucks a month? But then that's going to become four bucks a month. And it's kind of like that stormwater $5 fee that's now $15. Um, and that's my, my concern in this is where does it stop? When do we just start saying, just we'll open our pockets to anything that anybody wants to contract with the city for? Drew Sykes, I'm here to represent Safe Recycling. Um, I don't have a question, I just have kind of a statement of record, basically. Um, just to inform you all that you know, SAFE is our core principle. We want to support and advocate and be a supporter of any kind of recycling. So however it gets worked out between Republic, the eco economy of scales, um, have some kind of recycling period. You know, we'd hate to have it see it all go away totally. So we would want to have even the reduced materials, a collection bin system, uh, any, any, any option available we would support, and that's kind of where we stand. Um, I also want to say that, you know, SAFE was a collection agency, not a recycling agency, and we were, um, basically, we were being helped and supported by Republic and Trashway before them, by Butts, by Acme, by a host of people, corporations that helped us with, uh, with collection, with material transport, uh, with uh, monetary purchases. And so they were all in it here for the good. But I think with the economy the way it is, it's going to make it hard. So whatever we figure out, I just want to say that SAFE, even though we're out of business right now, we still have a board and we're still formulating. And when we get things back up, we still want to be an educational resource to help people understand more about recycling, to support recycling. Uh, to understand recycling as far as keeping contamination rates down, anything that we can do to make recycling a reality for San Angelo. Um, so that's just basically what I want to say. Thank you. Shane, we do have another question from online. Uh, it's a question about the city's contract with Republic Services and ask if there are other options available, and if so, are we pursuing them? And I think they're talking about our commitment to that vendor. Yeah, we um, currently do have a contract with Republic Services um, for trash collection, trash collection and recycling collection, uh, and, and as as we move forward. And again, we um, we currently have a contract in place, and and again, we're out here. We're we're seeking options to look at moving forward, not trying to force any one options down anyone's throat. And again, true to try to amend the exist, maybe amend the existing contract, depending on what we come up with and what council gives us direction to do and move forward. And so, again, no decisions have been. Ma I want to reiterate, no decisions have been made, and 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 again, we're seeking we're seeking input. Uh, I, I believe Republic merely came to city council again seeking relief. And of course, council did not offer any relief 
to them at that point, but they offered options to look at what can we do different to off offset these increased costs of doing business. Um, and so, but again, there's no, um, there's nothing been decided. There's, um, there's, again, we're just looking for different options and receiving citizen input to move forward or for council to move forward and, and providing staff some gu guidance in how they want to move forward. Hi, I'm Margarita Severe, and I travel back and forth to Abilene and other locations for work. And I noticed that in Abilene, one of the options here we had was where you had uh, self-recycling or bins where you go and recycle. That's what we had for safe. Why can't we? And they have now have two locations, one on the Buffalo Gap side and one on Highway 508. And then Winters also has a SOT where they have location there. If we cannot do or cost or whatever, like we did for SAFE before, why don't we just self-recycle? And also, there also people are saying no more plastics or reducing the plastics. How are we going to redu How are we going to recycle the plastics when we're told not to use not to use plastics at all possible or one use plastics? And and and, as we're, and again, plastics right now, it, it's a very hard market. I know some plastics probably still have some value uh, in them. A lot of the plastics have, have actually lost a lot of value. And so uh, I think that, again, and again, right now, they're, they're saying everybody, all the material recovery facilities out there that I know of, they're still sorting, they're still bailing, and right now they're storing those materials. And that's what they're doing, waiting for a market or waiting for market recovery. Uh, and again, when you when you talk to to people around the industry, as as we've looked around and 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 we've talked uh, to people around the industry, it's one of those things that uh, they can't really see a, an end in sight of of when China. I mean, there, there's talks that maybe a year, maybe two years, and then there's I've also heard the other side of the gamut that they don't have any idea uh, when these things might ease up, and so. I know right, every, everybody wants to do the right thing and everybody wants to store and everybody wants to, to recycle and do the right thing. But, but again, at some point in time, you know, we, we unfortunately, we, we, we live in a, a capital, you know, a capital economy and a capitalist, a capitalistic society. And so uh, a lot of times at the end of the day or at the end of the year or the end of the decade, uh, money becomes the issue and, and we, we fall, we fall to that. And so unfortunately, but uh, again, I think reduce and reduce and reuse and and then recycle. You know, you start that same mantra over and over again. So if you can reduce it, you know, and not use it, then then I think that's uh, one of the. I mean, that's been a mantra for a long time, and it's something that we need to look at. Yes, ma'am. My name is Monica. I can you hear me? <laughs> kind of short. Um, I'm gonna follow up with that statement because I think it's great. I think it's a global problem. I think people in Europe are feeling the same problems that we are here. And so I would like to find out what the city of San Angelo um, would, could do really as a leadership in alternatives to where we send our recycling. Meaning keeping it more local, even if it's national or state. I guess I'm asking for a bigger look at, at, at this picture. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a big problem. And so I really believe in recycling, reducing, reusing, recycling, but I don't want my recycling to then just end up in the landfill and feel like I'm doing a good job. So I'm still up for the curbside recycling because I think you guys have done a great job with that and you've done everything to make it really successful. Um, but I, if I'm going to do that, I want really to know that it's truly being sent someplace to be processed and reused. But I'd also like, I'd like cities locally to then go to their counties and then the counties go to the states and say, look, we need to find a problem. And I think Texas is a big, great state that can maybe be a leader in the nation, but it has to start somewhere because no, nobody's doing it. Everyone's now kind of going, oh yeah, we're stockpiling, or no, look at our numbers, and they're really, we're losing money, but not really. So I'm, I'm asking you to think bigger and broader instead of stand, stand on the pedestal and 
march forward with this. <laughs> Find alternate solutions. And I think Republic actually would be able to help because they are an, a national company and they have some bigger, broader resources. I mean, and, and that is, and, and, and you do bring up a good point because the recycling industry as a whole and, and uh, the recycling industry as a whole had to start looking at that and we started looking at it from a, a national perspective. Um, if, if you look at uh, some of the some of the organizations and company that that deal specifically with recycling and that's all they do for a living uh, and their whole living is based around it they are looking at those alternatives how can we use these products locally with within our nation uh, uh, whether that's in the state or it's in the nation how can we use these products or how can what can we do differently to clean them up and use them within products here in the here in the US uh, they China has always just taken our products, so we never have really had to, to put that much effort into those thought processes, but now they are. Uh, and and the, the, that tide has really started to turn uh, at a national level as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Steve Hammer. Uh, thank you very much. For, sure. Thank you. I, I agree with her completely. I think we're, we're first of all, <laughs> we have a problem with trash because of the way we look at trash. And, and we can solve this problem. Other people have done it. Other countries have done this. Looking at Longview, looking at Abilene, looking at somebody else down the road, we're probably going to see a mirror reflection of the way we do it. We're destroying the land. And if we put more stuff in the landfill, we're going to continue to destroy the land. Several years ago, we started a water conservation program, and we said, please save water, please save water. And we did. And then the water department said, eh, damn, you saved too much. <laughs> and now we're going to have to raise the amount of money because you didn't meet, you know, we didn't, our budget didn't. People will come along and participate, and that's what we've got this, with this recycling thing going on right now. We have tried to get recycling started in San Angelo for years and years, and now we have more effort because of what Republic put in place. But to stop that progress is, is ridiculous. I mean, it, it's, it's just saying, we can't do it because we don't know how else to take care of our trash. We're not going to consume less. We're, we're, we're a consumer, we're just consumption oriented. And, and so we need to look beyond our horizon. How do other countries solve the trash problem? I mean, why are, I mean it, it's simple, just do a Google search. And you'll, you'll see things that you've never seen before. We can no longer say we've always done it this way. We need to continue to do it this way because what we're going to do is to leave the people that come behind us nothing but terrible land. So, you know, I appreciate the information about what, <clears throat> excuse me, what Longview does or what Fort Worth does or whatever, but, but this is a bigger thing, much, much bigger and um, and other people have solved this, for goodness sakes. I, I'm disappointed that here we are in 2018 still talking about where to bury our trash. That's very disappointing. Really. Really. Thank you. Hey, Shane, Shane, we have some more comments uh, from online. This is just a comment, and then it's, it's followed by a, a question. The comment is, I'd hate to see curbside recycling discontinued. I'm disabled, and it's not feasible for me to take recycling to a place. So that's the comment. The question is, if the city adds recycling collection bins around town, will we still be given an additional bin for our home to replace the recycling container without an additional charge? And again, it, this revolves a lot around the same question that we had earlier. And, and yes, uh, uh, again, that that's still those are those are contract negotiations for the amendment of the contract. But yes, I'm I, again, I'm going to go out on a limb and say yes. If, if recycling goes away, we are going to offer another bin at no charge for for uh, the increase in your in your trash service as well too. 
Sure. You sure, Bob. Y'all, y'all you make all, you make all the comments you want. Um, my name is Becky Bennis, and um, I agree with Steve and Monica. And I've also done a lot of traveling this year, and just went to Kenya, where we were not allowed to take plastics into their country, because as a country, they said your plastics are ruining and killing our environment. In Austin, you can't go shopping and get a plastic bag. So plastic bags are not recyclable. So couldn't the city and the community of San Angelo, Texas, which is really the most awesome city that we have, couldn't we stand on our mor moral compass here and look at our core values and maybe take a lesson from our Native American roots that look at a seven generation output of what our impact is to Mother Earth in what we do every single day. So there are other options and I, and I think that we do have to think bigger and we have to start looking again for the greater good, not just for our pocketbook, but the greater good for everybody. And I think there's other ways to look at trash and other regula other things that we can do to minimize trash. I mean, if Kenya can stop plastics coming into their country and Austin can stop plastic bags from being picked up at a grocery store to buy your groceries, I think the city of San Angelo can can show up in a little bit bigger way to make a different opportunity or different selections for us. I also think that as much as I loved your statistics and your presentation, it was very skewed in one direction. I would really appreciate another view of possibilities and look at our numbers and what is the contract with Republic and what does it say that I'm a businesswoman and when I write a contract with my client, if it just becomes inconvenient for me and I'm not making enough money, I don't legally have the option to go to my client and say, hey, I'm not making any money here, so I'm going to go ask a third party to help me make that money. That's my contract. So as the city of San Angelo, y'all wrote a contract with Republic, and just because Republic's not making the money they want to make, what's in that contract that makes us liable for that business decision that they made? So those are the questions I have. What does the contract really say? Who wrote the contract, and what are the out, you know, the exit strategy for the contract? And then three, what are the other things we can do as a community to stop so much trash production? Bob, you don't I can't. I can't. <laughs> I, well, but I'm going to interrupt. Uh, I think Becky just hit the nail right on the head. Um, there, there is a contract in here somewhere between the city of San Angelo and Republic. Yes, sir. And I don't know when it expires. I've heard things, there's a lot of talk on the street, that to, to incentivize that uh, contract, the Republic said, well, we're going to add another million dollars or two million, five million, I don't know what it was, to make sure that we can keep that landfill running uh, to refurbish it, or I don't know what they were going to do, but it was a it was an incentive, and so I was looking at your figures up there on. Uh, I guess it was Plano. I can't remember which one, and it said they lost so much money this year they used to get money. Well, if they if if we have this fund that holds an amount of money that Republic paid us for the privilege of getting the contract, the incentive. Maybe we can use that money to bridge the gap between the marketplace and the reality of recycling in San Angelo. That's step number one. Number two, the first gentleman that spoke asked the question, how long will our landfill 
last if we stop recycling? Your answer was, I believe, six additional months. It would reduce it by six months. Oh, it would reduce it by six. Yes, it would reduce. It would okay, re reduce. But how the long does yeah. that landfill have as of today? Approximately fifteen years, 15 as, years. as the existing permit says today. Okay, and and then we have um, we're going to increase it, so it's going to take it's going to be fourteen years and six months. Is that fair to say that our landfill will last that much longer? Again, those are very base, appro very approximate numbers. Right, yes. and you had a figure in there about uh, <coughs> excuse me compaction rate versus tonnage that goes out in the truck. Yes, I again. That's that's just talking in the in the approximations of, uh, you know, when we look at the six months, when we're talking about the six months, that's based off, um, that's just looking based off tonnage. That doesn't look once we start looking at the specific recyclables and how well the compaction rate is and how much airspace they take and things like that. So there's different variables in there, but again, these are approximate numbers, and so we're saying six months. Okay. Well, just a suggestion from one guy. If we have 14 and a half years left on this landfill and we have an immediate problem that we're contracted between the city and, and uh, Republic, seems to me that a, a rush to judgment um, is not a good idea right now. Uh, maybe there's a moratorium put on recycling to buy us the time and to buy butts the time to do whatever they need to do. And a really serious effort is made between the city and the Republic. And then my last point is, what if they don't perform to their contract? Can they walk away? I bet Becky had a wonderful point. Who, who can walk away from this? And if we did walk away from it, who can we get to come in? The um I'm gonna sit down now. Okay, let me let me tr let me try to let me try to briefly walk through the contract. We do have a contract with Republic. Our Republic is for trash collection and recycle collection and disposal. The and of course again the recycle component is non-exclusive. So it's it's basically an open market system. But since we provide curbside recycling, they are the designated curbside recycling company and the fee for curbside recycling is placed within, within the contract pricing. The, uh, the contract uh, is, is very clear. Uh, they have to provide that service. The only, the only out that they have is to come to city council if they have a, if they have a substantial change in, in their business model, they have the right to come to council and ask for an increase um, in the pricing. Or, or again, uh, that's why they brought that's that's why they brought that's why they brought these options is because basically by contract, they have to provide the service. There is no other option. They have to provide it. But if they provide that service and there is a significant change in how they're having to do business, they do have the right to come to council within that contract and ask for a price increase. Council doesn't have to give it to them, but at that point in time, if they believe based on the contract language, if they believe that uh, whatever this price increase is is so great to them and they are losing so much money, they can back out of the contract. And then we go out and contract, uh, we have to go out and contract with another vendor. That's how it works. And, but there's breach, there's breach clause on both sides. It's not, it's not a one-way street. If they do not, if they do not stand, if they do not do what they're supposed to do, then they're in breach of their contract. and. If they don't correct that breach, then we can. Then the city can also get out of that contract as well too. So, uh, but that's that's what the contract. That's how the contract is stated. They, I mean, they have to provide the service. There is no, there's no two ways about it. But they also have the right in this situation. If if they believe that their operational costs or their operational changes were to such the extent that uh, they need to ask for a price increase, then they have the right to. To, to come to council and ask for that price increase. However, they are that's they didn't just do that. They came to city council and said, "Hey, here's some options. Would y'all be interested in any of these?" 
And then city council said, we're not going to talk about this. We want to hear from the citizens. What do the citizens want? And so that's why we're here, to, to hear what you want. So council can hear what you want, and they can then take that message to Republic. So Shane, here are some things that some folks want who are uh, weighing in online. Um, I think there is a contract in place with Republic to recycle. They need to honor that. No other business can stop a contract midway through. Uh, think of the environment. I agree with uh, Steve Hammer. So Steve Hammer has at least one fan out there on the internet. Um, there are. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we also have a comment here. Let me scroll back to it. Um, Will the city council consider voting on a plastic bag ban? When we moved here, I was shocked at the number of plastic bags littering the town. After getting accustomed to the wind here, I understand it's not all littering. Uh, and then one, one final comment, our family of four fills, in all caps, our recycle bin weekly and our garbage bin is never full. Recycling is a necessity for our future. We are too consumable. Edwin Guthrie again. I think there is some misunderstanding on what I was saying. I wasn't saying to do away with recycling forever. What I was saying is short term, maybe a year to 18 months, to give the business community a chance to either entrepreneurship of new, new recycling programs to develop, get established, and make it worth, worthwhile to, to be able to do it financially. So with that being said, and I wanted to correct the one thing, I think you were talking about Austin in the plastic bags. Actually, they lost that lawsuit and they are still in existence of use. So I just wanted to correct the record there. So I think everybody should just maybe step back a minute. Like you said, we're not doing nothing tonight. We're getting input, but it's like new technology. What was happening 20 years ago nobody thought of what's existence today. So if it takes us maybe to cancel the program, so financially nobody is hurting, fin uh, Republic or the city or the citizens, which we pay for a timeout till technology or the market internationally increases to where, hey, all of a sudden India economy takes off and starts booming and they want all of our plastic bottles we can find, ship them over there but that's what i was saying and that's why i asked about the timeline on the landfill to me six months on a 15-year note is reasonable i know everybody wants to recycle we've been doing it for a couple years now and i appreciate it but if it's financially inhibiting I don't know about y'all, but I'm on a fixed income, and I won't burn a $5 bill to save a quarter. That's my, that's my comment. I think that's a good clarification, and I, I think where my mind's gone in this discussion here is a little bit kind of splitting that difference, right? And, and my concern is because of the years of work that have been put in, and it's been a lot more than just a few years that people have been recycling in San Angelo, it's a few years of curbside. But to develop that mindset, and it has been mentioned here with water conservation, you know, it takes years and years to move the needle with a mass of people to get folks moving in a direction. And the backsliding that happens is immediate. And, and I think from my perspective, putting a moratorium or stopping something all out, and I know not people aren't necessarily saying that tonight, but that concerns me tremendously of just shutting it down, you know, and, and then expecting to kind of pick back up. Because to pick back up, if it's six months or a year or two years, five years, it takes another generation, 15 years to get, to get it going again. And so I think if we can be smart about, I, I love the fact that people are challenging all of us here tonight to think big and think beyond what the norm is and what we can do today and what we know today and push those boundaries and be a trendsetter in this area. I think that's, that, that's fantastic. Um, but in the interim, it does take time to move big ideas, right? And so if we can, 
if we can find a way to be, to, to, again, to kind of split the difference here and, and, and tool, tool what we do for the next little while in San Angelo to help keep that momentum going. Um, the market, we do not live in a static world. The, the world is changing instantly around us every day. And so these markets will change, things will come, technologies will evolve. So I would encourage us to, while we are thinking big and trying to move in those directions, for the immediate here and now, look for ways to keep recycling going, but in a way that doesn't, that's not too burdensome to certain folks that, that aren't quite so enthused with the idea. Um, so kind of another thought. Hi. I'm Peggy Tharp, and I've been recycling since recycling was not only not cool, it wasn't very easy to do. Um, I also think that what's been missing in this program all along is the educational component. I live in a neighborhood where most of my neighbors do not have a clue about what to recycle or how to recycle it. I know it's on the top of the can, but they don't get it. And I think Republic and the school district and the city did not put the effort in in the first place to make people understand what it was we were doing here. I also understand that if we were doing it better, we'd have a bigger problem than we've got now. <laughs> but if we stop, we'll never get started again at the level that we need to. And I understand the gentleman who won't spend $5 to save a quarter, I'm on a fixed income too, but I will spend $5 to save the next generation. And I think we understand that that's really what we're talking about here. I'm Clinton Hudson. I'm a big advocate for recycling. I work at ASU and I have three recycle bins underneath my desk and one trash bin. Um, and the poor custodian, she empties my recycle bins about five times more than the trash. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really in support of recycling in any form. Um, like Drew was safe said, I, you know, I understand if changes have to be made, um, but one thing that I really encourage the city to look at is getting rid of recycling is the easy thing to do, but it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Um, we, we should, whatever, whatever we can do as citizens to be able to continue recycling, um, our current contamination rate is 32%. At 350 tons a month, that's over 100 tons of trash going in to our recycling, that creates more cost because Republic's being charged a tonnage fee. So if we as citizens can at least work on being better at recycling, that will help the problem immediately. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm all for getting rid of, of mixed paper right now. Um, we have to go for the recyclables that we can do. Um, I think that's better than getting rid of it altogether. So I challenge the city council to do the right thing, not the easy thing. Uh, this is to my one fan out there. This is Steve Hammer again. Uh, yeah, my mom is listening. That's right. I, I'm, I'm really not trying to put you on the spot, but, but I, I want to ask the question. If on the survey there was a question that said to the effect, we believe that Republic... Trying to think on my feet and do this. We believe that re the contract is, is void. Something, I'm paraphrasing now, okay? If you had the option that was on there and you got enough citizens to say, yeah, we don't want to negotiate any, any change with Republic. We want to look to another contract holder. Is that a valid question that should be circulated to the, on the survey? Not at this point. I mean, there's been no breach of contract. There's been there's there's no there's been nothing to say that they are not going to fulfill their contract as it as it stands now. None of those options said that they're going to. That I read, none of those options say we'll go ahead and fulfill our contract, even if you don't make these adjustments. Is that is that right? That. But again, I mean, again, they were again they were they were bringing to council. They have identified an issue in their in their business model, whatever that issue is. I know we they, and, I, and I agree with them. I wouldn't do business with China either. But <laughs> I think that's pretty short sighted to put all your eggs in one basket. If I was negotiating a contract and something happened, I would not like Becky. I wouldn't go to my the people I had the contract with and said, "Gee whiz, you know, I need more money." They they. they that, that doesn't happen. That shouldn't happen. 
So why, why can't we include that type of a sentence on that survey to get a real feel? If, if This is the first opportunity that people in San Angelo have had to talk about this, this contract anyway with Republic. We were told, you guys remember, we were told it was done behind closed doors. We, we had to take it or leave it when it was all signed, sealed, and delivered. And this is the first opportunity. So let's, let's use this opportunity. It's a bigger problem than simply China is no longer taking our dirty laundry. I really believe that it's a bigger deal than that. I think that that's a legitimate question. Does the citizen, do the citizens of San Angelo want to reopen those negotiations? There are other people in this business who we don't know that they can, we don't know they, that they cannot service the way we want to be serviced, but this is a great opportunity to find out. And I think that type of a question should be asked on that survey. Thank you. Yes, sir. The, uh, again, we are, in, we are in the middle of a contract and until uh, one party breaches that contract, there's no validity to us being able to do that. When is the end of the contract? The end, of the, the end of the initial term of the contract is, is approximately six years. Okay. Okay. Did I hear you say that the recycle is not exclusive? Correct. That's what I said. It is not an exclusive contract with Republic. Because I've seen those big bins, recycle bins around town that say Texas Disposal Systems. Correct. So I didn't know how that was working. Correct. The, again, they're so they're just a separate company. They're a separate company that. that's offering recycling within the city. Okay. It's mostly it's mostly commercial recycling because within the existing contract, the city's contracted curbside recycler is Republic, and only so to the, Republic. the the charge. No, it's I mean it's not just I mean it's not only Republic, but they are the ones that we charged within our contract to make sure that every citizen had the opportunity to be picked up curbside. And so there, there, is, there is a fee associated with that service within our contract, uh, existing contract with the Republic. But if you chose to do curbside recycling at your house through another company and pay them separately because you don't like what Republic is doing or how they're doing it, that is your right to do so. So if, if Republic's wanting to redo the contract and saying that the recycling is you know, an issue, could we just tell them, okay, you're not going to do the curbside, and we go get another company, pay Republic just to pick up trash, and then have a contract with another company to do the recycling? We could, and that was a lot like the last option that was provided there where we talked about uh, having a uh, basically a subscription service. We would basically do away with curbside recycling out of our existing contract, and then you, the citizen, would subscribe to who, whichever provider you so choose <laughs> chose to do your curbside recycling of course the city at that point would there would we would be out of it so the fee that you negotiated directly with that company would be what you paid and and you know so you're probably my guess is for a subscription service based on the last company that was providing one here in town you know 12 15 dollars a month is probably what a subscription service would cost and again i don't know that oh, excuse me i don't know that but that was just based on my understanding of what other people were paying prior to the curbside recycling program for a subscription service at their home. Shane, we have another comment from online. Uh, this lady writes, I'll never recycle if they don't come to my home to pick it up. We have two trash bins and one recycle bin. We always fill at least two cans up every week and rarely have bulk trash. I would consider paying a small monthly fee for recycling. I just want to Think, I think I want to clarify what you were trying to say. I think she was asking you, as the city of San Angelo, if you, the city of San Angelo, were able to contract with a separate recycling company. And it would be included in our utility bills. That's because it sounds like the contract that the recycling aspect is separate from the trash contract? I don't know. That's how no, you're presenting it, so I think I'm, we're all I'm kind sorry. of confused. Cur so cur currently, I'll let you explain it is a not, it's re recycling, and, and it is somewhat uh, difficult to explain, but recycling, the recycling component is non-exclusive, whether that's anybody, commercial, residential, it's non-exclusive. 
However, when we contracted with Republic Services for trash collection, we also contracted them to be the city's curbside recycler as well, uh, which in, there is a small charge on your bill for that curbside recycling component of it. It's all blended together into one cost. There's not, it's not separated out into individual columns. It's one cost to provide the whole service. Um, trash collection and curbside recycling collection. Um, so it, it's one price. Could we, can and w would we break that out if everybody decided to do away with re recycling? Yes, we can go back and back those charges out and figure out what those are and back those out. However, that's not how our, the bill, the current bill is, is designed. And so, but we can't, I mean, those are, those are all options. And again, we're, we're wanting your feedback so we can get those options. But our, recy our recycling, we can't necessarily, based on how we have our contract set up with Republic, the city, it, it wouldn't be in anyone's best interest for the city to have a contract with Republic to do this and then a contract with another company to do this. And I'm not even sure that, le I'm not even sure legally I could, do, I'm not even sure legally we could do that. Oh, can you, can you, yeah, they ask you to speak into the mic, but. So, to be clear, it sounds like the city, with the tenure contract with Republic, has no other option to contract with someone other than Republic for recycling. And I think people are confused with that, because, because it sounds like the citizens, we, can privately subscribe to another recycling thing, but the city is in contract for 10 years with Republic for that. That's correct. So you, that, you, that, I think you, people that is That is correct, how you just stated right. that, that is correct. Unless they breach. Uh, unless there is a breach in the contract, and then we, then if there's a breach in the existing contract and how it's, how it's set up, then we deal with the breach of contract at that time. Edwin Guthrie again. Yes, sir. I, I just want a clarification of one thing. No matter who's what company we're with on the recycling, I want to know, is there any company or place that's going to take the recyclables? Because the last thing I want to do is drive around the loop and see a mile-high stack of cardboard, a half a billion bottles laying around, because nobody's taking the recyclables. I'm not against recycling. I'm just saying I believe if I'm understanding the the seminar here correctly, there's nobody to take the recyclables. That's what I want a clarification on. There, for, for the most part, that, that, that's correct. Now, I mean, cardboard is still marketable. People are still taking cardboards. People are, people are still taking aluminum. But when we start looking at plastics and mixed papers and those type things, people are currently bailing those and storing them currently, whether it's on site or in a warehouse or wherever, Trying to trying to wait out the market to see if the market is going to recover, so those materials become marketable or sellable. So they are they are stockpiling. Certain companies are stockpiling those those materials right now. I I, I cannot speak to Butts's practices right now. <laughs> My name is Steve Hampton. I'm sure glad that. I'm not the only one in the room that likes an open mic. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> that was. A, that was a, no. I uh, I've been listening to what uh, to everything, and uh, th there's been uh, some illumination on what's going on that uh, maybe has not been revealed before. Uh, we had no knowledge of of uh, cities cities like Fort Worth. Uh, making money uh, where where we're paying money uh, and long view uh, and so this needs to be uh, worked into a new contract if it's when it's revaluated so other uh, ideas that came to my mind um, uh, if Fort Worth is uh, ahead of us in that way uh, maybe we need to watch what Fort Worth does and uh, and uh, see how they deal with it. Uh, we also have a uni uh, university here, two, a couple of universities here, that uh, can help us uh, uh, find markets and uh, methods or, or uh, 
methods of dealing with the situation that uh, we don't we don't give uh, ASU a chance to ever show how how bright they are or, and they have their resource in, in Lubbock that they can refer to uh, also so uh, we need to do things like that uh, also we have a uh, COSA DC uh, uh, with the half cent uh, sales tax uh, uh, out there trying to give money away, trying to buy buy people uh, uh, off to come to San Angelo when when we uh, might this might be a startup uh, business. Uh, uh, you know, plastic can be reused. They're making uh, uh, deck boards out of it. They're they're uh, you know we need uh, playground equipment. Uh, it's all made of plastic. Uh, it, it melts at a low temperature, uh, it, it, and we have gas at the uh, that we're burning uh, out at the uh, dump uh, that could uh, provide that temperature. Uh, there's a lot of money being thrown away here. Steel is being buried out there, I bet, and uh, that could be recycled also. So there's a lot of things that in inefficiencies in the way we're doing things uh, that maybe the uh, a bureaucratic uh, perspective is not uh, making uh, taking full advantage of. Uh, we need to be more like our ranchers, where we uh, come up with uh, creative ideas on on how to how to keep their business going. And and so uh, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm Sean Stein. I'm with Butts Recycling. We are still moving all the product, the plastics even, and mixed paper when we do get it. It's pennies on dollar. It's not enough to operate. So once our contract was up, we had to renegotiate with Republic and say we need some help here. We can't operate negative. But the products are still being taken. Most of it's going nationally. But the stuff that was going to China is all now here, so it's crowded where our stuff's going. So prices have dropped. So we're here to help. We're ones and twos only, yeah. but it's we don't get our costs out of working it currently with what the market is. It, it depends on how the program's done. It depends on what program we, you guys choose. It's a possibility. Well, they, yeah, they, well, they're not profitable. Please come to yeah. the microphone because the citizens can't hear you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Lloyd Pascal, former director of SAFE. Um, one of the things that I remember was ones and twos were the only things that we recycled at SAFE because that's the only thing we got paid on. Um, the three through sevens that we took, I took home and put in my recycle bins. Ones, ones would be basically your water bottles, twos would be like your milk jugs, laundry detergents, um, anything that has a different number on it or no number is something that was just basically uh, pennies on the dollar. Well, if, there's uh, no uh, home for them. Yeah, no They become trash, basically. So, so my question was, there's still some money on plastics, ones and twos, that you can a little bit, but you know most of this recycling program overall, working it, especially with contamination, is not profitable. Mm -hmm. That's why we had, as a company, had to ask for a little bit more money to do it. And that is the problem with one of the things we talked about with drop-off sites. Unless it is monitored, people are going to be throwing dirty diapers in there, like they do in the recycle bins now, and dead animals and everything else. I've seen it at Butts. I went and saw after they started curbside. Trash in there is unbelievable. Unless it is monitored, you will have trash in there. And even the curbside. I mean, I go by and I see the green bins with tree limbs in them. Those aren't things that we recycle. So unless the city, the citizens can be better educated on, this is the only things that can go in there because it's something that can be marketed more or less nationally as opposed to internationally because that's the problem. Um, we will have 
contamination problems. We will never hit the 500 tons or whatever it is monthly without a lot of the things. So it is a huge problem. Glass is one thing we never did take here. Uh, we took it at SAFE, but the only place close enough for glass is in Middle Lothian, and they pay $5 a ton. At least they were, and that's not much. So, but it's better than burying it in the landfill. So, I, you know, I don't know what the answers are, but thank you for coming up. Thank you. And one, one thing that I want, and go ahead, come up while I'm saying this. And one thing I want to remember is, I know we're talking about an issue today, but we also have to remember too that San Angelo is the first and only still town in West Texas to offer curbside recycling services. No, you know, no, you know, the reason we can't get any information out of Lubbock or Midland or Odessa or Abilene or any of these other towns in West Texas is because no one is offering this program. And so, from from our standpoint, we uh, it's. I don't guess no uh, any problem is a good problem, but uh, it, at least we're, at least we ha we're able to have this conversation because we actually have a program uh, that no one else in West Texas does. With that being said, it does create even more issues out here because we are out here all by ourselves. We're, uh, there, there's we we don't it, transportation is an issue. We don't have any other towns regionally within our area to help with material recovery facilities to help to help. Um, help fund you know and get the materials and things like that to help fund these fund these uh, programs and, and these companies to do this and so it puts us in a unique somewhat unique situation out here but again uh, it, it at least we have a program to talk about at this point and so uh, I know we're talking about it, it we're, we're kind of down and in, in the dumps about all of this but uh, you know again we're trying to we're trying to come up with solutions uh, because we do not want to just get away do away with it because I, 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 I believe what you said, that um, if we do away with it, it will take another generation before we can get it back. It, it is a generational issue. So we have an option. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Folks are having trouble hearing. <laughs> Brenda Gunter, the mayor. So let me be clear on what was asked a few minutes ago. There is a possibility that we could take the fee that we charge, that citizens are charged currently for their trash with Republic and reduce that amount by what is, would be described as the expense of curbside pickup. And each individual citizen would then be able to contract for their own curbside recycling. Is that correct? That, that is a possibility, yes ma'am. Thank you. So it seems as though everybody still wants recycling. Um, if that's the case and we keep the recycling through Republic, what are the next steps? What happens next? Is there a cost increase? I know there's obviously going to be more, you know, to go into that, but what are a viable, the viable steps that will be next? The, as we look forward, we're going to, again, we're in, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, I was visiting with some of our uh, news media earlier. We are going to have two more town hall meetings uh, next Tuesday on October the 4th and then next Thursday uh, or October 2nd and then Thursday October the 4th. Uh, the second will be at Southland Baptist Church. Uh, the fourth will be at uh, Lincoln Middle School and again we're going to keep continuing to take public input at those at those forums as well plus through the online survey that we have out right now. We're going to compile all of the information and all the comments that we gather from the town halls and from the surveys. And I'm currently scheduling to be on the October 16th council meeting to present this information to our city council members. And from there, the city council will, will take all of this information that they receive um, into consideration. And then they will give staff, myself and, and, and city staff, direction on how they would like to see us move forward. Uh, and so whatever their, whatever their city council's direction is, is what we will move forward with uh, and, what, and what all those options are. And then from there, if those options are uh, the city sitting down with Republic Services and negotiating contract amendments, then, then that's what we sit down and do. 
Uh, once, uh, once both sides are agreeable to those amendments, then we'll ratify those, uh, those agreements back through city council again. Shane, Shane, we have a number of comments I just want to read through here real quickly from online. If the majority don't want to recycle, then don't force them. I think it is important to note that our program is voluntary. No one is forced to, to participate, although it's encouraged, obviously. Uh, and this woman says people shouldn't be forced to recycle if they don't want to. Uh, let's see. For the time being, could we get a list of items that would be profitable for the recycling center? I could definitely do my part until a decision is made to only place what is beneficial in my recycling bin, and that's one of the options that you mentioned uh, a little bit earlier. Um, this says recycling should be optional. Charge the ones who want to do it and leave the rest alone. That would get to your subscription service, uh, I believe. Um, and uh, one person says, we do not want this program. And another person says, we want convenience. That's all there is to it. We have a 10-year contract with the Republic. Currently, yes. The, but the, y'all signed a 10-year contract. We signed a 10-year contract. Is that contract. standard policy for San Angelo to sign 10-year contracts with? L large, large contracts like this where we're talking about significant sums of money and investments uh, from companies uh, investing in trucks and the and the tra and the bins and all of those things. Th those are traditionally set in at ten plus year increments. I do recycle. I do encourage my friends to recycle, but I felt like this is a contract written in pencil that people just change at all times. It's you know contracts can be amended at any time, and so uh, but again, it's it's one of those things where we want to keep the program. We have a program. Thank goodness, and we want to keep the program. We're just trying to figure out what is the most feasible way to, to maintain this program within the city. Brenda Gunter, the mayor. You just might remind everybody about the every other week pick up on bulk versus recyclables because we did change the original contract where we were doing recyclable pickup every week and it seemed the citizens really wanted more frequent bulk pickup so there was an amendment to the contract based off of that conversation so you might just go through that for a minute correct it, and of course as we went into this new contract and especially as we went into uh, curbside recycling, which was something totally new for our city, uh, and, and we looked at looked at the trying to to create a whole program. Um, we started out, and we started out with um, every you know once a week trash, once a week um, uh, curbside recycling, uh, and then quarterly bulk pickups. Uh, quickly, quickly found out um, two things: one. Uh, recycling, curbside recycling being in San Angelo was very new and we had a whole lot of people not using it uh, or we had a whole lot of people using it incorrectly. Um, and so as we were, you know, we go through the educational process and, and we're still going through the educational process. Uh, uh, and, and of course we have had to remove bins because we, even though we continue to go to homes uh, that, that we know are, are, are not recycling properly or putting uh, trash in the recycling bins. We've actually over and over and over again, even after we've visited with them, we've had to remove them. But uh, as as we were moving forward, we found that out, and we also found out that yard waste was was a significant issue here in the city of San Angelo. Uh, people having 15 to 20 bags, you know, every other week uh, from their from their yards and their lawns and, and leaves, bags and bags of leaves, and so. Uh, through uh, through town hall discussions, uh, we came back with a uh, proposed amendment to city council to reduce our um, curbside recycling collection to every other week and increase our bulk collection to every other week as well too, uh, which has seemed to st still work. Um, uh, and it has uh, helped tremendously with the bulk collections at people's homes. We've uh, it, it has amazed me the tonnage in the bulk collection program that we're seeing, uh, as well as our citizens free dumping program out at the landfill. It's, it, it's amazing the tonnage that we're, that we're actually seeing uh, people use in those programs as well too. So, 
but again, that was a contract amendment that we did uh, in about year two of the contract. And again, um, contracts uh, contracts are fluid uh, or can be fluid documents. And so, uh, with the chances to amend them, when we need to amend them to make sure that we're providing the best service that we can. Yes, sir. Morning, Bennis. Uh, on this information, the bulk and the every other day recycling we need to get mr anthony on his information on y'all's channel to really push that because the bulk sometimes that's the reason why that brush is in this recycle because people don't understand about the bundling so if we can get with republic with our monthly bill educate us what bulk is what the other week is and i think we'll you know with the bags of leaves and everything mm -hmm. more information for our citizens okay, okay. No, no, don't change yeah. anything, everything. Let us get, just, just, just explain more what bulk is. More, uh, okay, more education. Dumb it down to redneck, okay? Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm Rick Abbott, and I'm, I'm in the commodity scrap business, so I'm real familiar with the price fluctuations. Uh, I dare say I don't think we'd be meeting here tonight if the price of aluminum cans was a dollar a pound and cardboard was 400 a ton because I don't think Republic Service would be wanting to offer us a rebate on our trash bill. So I really feel a contract is a contract. With that said, is there some way we can help butts cheapen the cost of what they're doing? And with that considered, could we go to maybe more bins where we do more cycle, recycling, more separating? Because obviously it's all about labor. It's about taking an aluminum can mixed with a piece of cardboard, mixed with a piece of plastic on a piece on the floor and separating it. So could we go to a system where we have a bin for the plastics that we're not making money on, a bin for the glass that we know is not worth anything, but then a possible bin and maybe do away with the large green can and go to two or three other smaller cans so that we as citizens are doing the labor somewhat for them and when they receive the material, it's already separated. Okay, thank you. I have to just accept that as a comment and maybe a future question because I cannot answer for butts and, and how their system works and, and what would improve improve them. Again, our contract was not with butts, so um, that's that's a question for them that they would have to answer through Republic or however. So, but uh, great comment. So, all right. Anyone else? If not, um, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. We really appreciate the feedback you, that you gave us uh, for challenging me, definitely, uh, because y'all did ask some challenge, very challenging questions, and so uh, which is good for for city staff and, and 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 your government to be challenged. And so as we move as we move forward again, we have two more uh, two more town halls again uh, Tuesday the second at Southland Baptist Church, uh, Thursday the fourth at Lincoln Middle School. Uh, both of those start at 6 o'clock, just like this one did. Again, please take the survey if you haven't already. Uh, COSATX.us forward slash recycling. Uh, please take that. And uh, again, let us know your comments. Uh, we appreciate y'all being here tonight. And, and again, um, thank y'all. Good night.